Killer Beast. It's Paula B from PaulaBFitness.com and on tap today we are going to do my very favorite workout of all time. We are going to run a marathon. Okay, not exactly, you're right, but we are going to do an indoor running or walking cardio endurance workout with a fun little twist. I've got my handy dandy gym boss here set for intervals of 26 seconds in honor of the marathon's 26.2 miles. And I've got a list of 26 body weight exercises that we're going to do at every interval. This is a fun way to get both cardio and a little bit of strength and some good endurance work. You don't need any equipment at all, so when you're ready for it, I'm totally ready. Let's run! All right, you guys, we are going to get started right now. Go ahead and get started with a nice walking pace. The first couple of intervals I'm going to take at a walking pace, we're just warming up. If you want to do the whole workout at this pace, this is a perfect pace. Still going to get plenty of good cardio endurance out of this. When it beeps at 26 seconds, we are going to do one squat. I know, that doesn't sound like squat, <laughs> but that's what we're going to do today. We're actually doing cardio endurance. This is much more about the walking or the running that we're doing. The other body weight exercise is one squat nice and deep and then right back to it. The other body weight exercises that we're doing are more like just a bonus. You know, when you run a marathon, it's more about that 26 miles, not the point two, although the point two really is the hardest part. When it beeps again, we're going to do one more squat. Each of our body weight exercises we're going to do two times and then we're moving on, never going to see it again. So when it beeps, one more squat, just right there, there we go, and then right back to it. Starting to bring that heart rate up, starting to feel a little bit warm already, doing a great job. When it beeps again, we're going to do a standing crunch. That means hands on shoulders, and we're going to bring a little bit of balance work, one knee to the opposite elbow, and then again on the other side. Going to do one on each side. Some of our body weight exercises today are single sided, so crunch and crunch and then right back to it. I'm going to do walking for just this interval. After we do our second standing crunch, I'm going to move into more of a jogging, probably not full on running, so that I can still talk to you the whole time. You are welcome to take it at whatever pace you want to. I want your heart rate up. This is about cardio today, but it doesn't have to be skyrocketing. This is standing crunch. This is a marathon not a sprint. <laughs> when it beeps again, we're going to do toy soldiers. We've done those before as a little bit of a warm-up. Hands go up overhead, opposite hand picks up to the opposite foot. There's a nice pace. Good job. And toy soldier. And then right back to it. Heart rate is definitely coming up now. When you're ready for it, you can bring it up to whatever pace that you can sustain for this whole workout. Toy Soldier one more time when it beats. And here we go. Nice and right back to it. The next time it beats, we're going to do one alley-oop. Feet are nice and wide. Hands go up and over to one side and then up and over to the other. Hello, Rosie. Rosie thought she would come and join us for our day. So up and over, and up and over. Keeping that heart rate nice and high, right back to it. We'll do that one more time. Of 
If you are doing a running movement, make sure that your feet are on the directly underneath you. Kind of staying on the balls of your feet. One more push up. And here we go. Good job. When it beats again, we get to stay on our feet for the next one. The next one is a goofy jump. It's a lot like a jumping jack, but there is no jumping. This entire workout can be low impact if you don't get to be. You do not have to do this running. If you would rather keep it at a walking pace, that is fine. Squat and out and out and then right back to it. Definitely feeling that heart rate now. And this is about where your heart rate should be for this entire workout. Here's the thing about cardio endurance. It's meant to be endured. <laughs> You're supposed to do this for a while. Now it's gotten kind of a bad rap. People complain about steady state cardio. Ooh, Jack. There we go. But the fact is, it's good for you. You're burning calories. You are making physical adaptations. And endurance is a really important skill. Sometimes you have to endure things. When it beats again, we're gonna do a reverse lunge plus a kick. Yes, more balance work. I can never get enough of that when we do high heart rate. So reverse lunge plus kick, reverse lunge and kick, and then right back to it. Awesome. That one took a little bit longer. Took a few more seconds off of our running. If you need to adjust your pace, feel free. Again, I want you to be going at a pace that you feel like you can sustain. Reverse lunge and kick. Reverse lunge and kick. I want you to be going at a pace that you feel like you could do all day. This workout is not going to last all day, but I want you to be going at a pace that you could go all day. This should be a moderately high heart rate, not crazy high. When it meets again, we're going to do a side shuffle. I'm just going to take about two steps to the side. Shuffle, shuffle, and shuffle, shuffle. And then right back to it, great job. You're welcome to put your hands down or up high. If you're starting to get tired, being right here at your side. That is something that happens, side shuffle. when I first started running. I actually built up some biceps muscles just from running because <laughs> my hands were right here like that. When it beats again, more balance work. We're going to do star balance. I'm going to start by tipping to my left side and then to my right. So tip and up and tip Woo! and up. That one definitely takes a little bit more time and a little bit more effort. What you're doing awesome. Star balance and balance. There we go, right back to it. Hopefully at this point you found a nice rhythm where you're breathing in and out. Nice and rhythmically. That's the secret to any kind of walking or running, is to be able to go nice and smooth in a rhythm. When it meets, we're gonna do a tripod push-up. So feet nice and wide, and push-up, and then right back to it. It's not a full push-up. You should really feel that in your triceps. We'll do that one more time. Try and get your head as low to the ground as you can. And push up. Great job. Right back to it. When it beats again. Oh yes indeed, more balance work. I did that on purpose today. I wanted first of all to give us a little bit of break from the cardio, but also this is great standing ab core work to work your balance when your heart rate is high. We're gonna do drinky birds. So tip it forward, stand it up, tip it forward, and 
and right back to you. A great job. If you ever want to run outdoors, if you haven't before, drinky bird, dip and up, and up, right back to When I very first started running, I actually tricked myself into running by counting. I counted my footsteps and I matched my breath to my footsteps, and that was how I was able to run, well, ever. I had never run before. I started counting, squatting, step backs are next. Squat, step, and step, and then right back to it. And I found that it was very soothing to me, actually, to count while I was running. It took my mind off of the actual, you know, physical act of running, which wasn't fun for me for a long time. But then I started to think of it as a relaxing activity because of squatting, step back, step, because of that zen, counting, rhythmic thing, I found that I really enjoyed it. It still took a while to get good at it and to feel like I could go for any length of time. Here we go. Curtsy lunges are next. Gotta find my place on this list. It's a long list today, but we are a little bit more than halfway through it. You're doing awesome. So curtsy lunge and curtsy lunge, and then right back to it. Definitely feel that one in the sides of my hips already. Those curtsy lunges get me every time. Keeping your head up, your chest up. If you need to go a little slower, go a little slower, but try and keep, if you're running, try and stay running curtsy lunge. And if you're walking, just slow down your pace a little bit. But I'd like it a lot if you didn't take any breaks. This is not a hit workout. <laughs> This is endurance. We're trying to go and keep our heart rate at its moderate level the entire time. When it beats again, we're going to do a little something I call X marks the spot, also known as wood choppers. Going to get you cool set and chop and chop and then right back to it. Really nice ab and oblique work.
couple of your endorphins are starting to kick in a little bit. And you're having a good time. Reach it down and up. Right back to it. Just one. That was a fast one. More money this time. Ground. We're doing Russian twists. I knew this was going to be tough, but I wanted to throw it in here just because I really like to get a variety of exercises. I didn't want them all to be squats, <laughs> which is, of course, the easiest thing to do for a standing workout. So we're going to pop our butts right down on the ground. Here we go. And twist on both sides. And right back to it. Yeah, that was tough, but you're tougher. You're doing awesome. We're only gonna do that one more time. We're getting down towards the end. We're way over halfway done. So we're getting to the trickier exercises. And here we go. Twist, twist, and right back up. Great job. When it meets again, we're gonna do an inchworm. So spread your feet nice and wide, hands on the ground. We're gonna walk it out. Walk it back. It's gonna take a couple of seconds, but we're gonna go as quickly as we can. Squat. If you 
you don't want to do a jump, that's totally okay. You can do a close squat and a wide squat. Same exact thing that we're doing with the jump and pop squat. Right back to it. Great job. Squat and pop. And right back to it. Awesome. All right, you guys things left. This next one, probably one of the toughest things we're doing, honestly, is walk the plank. So we're going to get down in a plank position. We're going to take one step with our hand on foot to the right, and then one step back with our hand on foot. So you're in a plank position, but you're walking. <laughs> so plank, so walk, and walk, and then right back to it. I know, I jumped my feet in. You don't have to jump, you can walk your feet in. I thought it would be faster. more time. Here we go. Walk and walk and right back to it. All right, you guys. Now, I normally save this one for later in the list because it's normally a tough exercise, but today, I don't think it's going to be all that hard. We've gotten up and down so many times now. We're doing burpees next. So we'll get our hands down, jump your feet out, push up, of course. Jump your feet back in. And right back to it. If you're doing a low impact version, you're just walking your feet. Same exact motion, but still gotta do the push up. That push up isn't high impact. <laughs> you don't get to get out of it that easy. And here it is Burpee. And right back to it, and you guys, this is our last running interval. One of these again. We're getting down on the ground for our built-in finisher. We've got two intervals of a plank hold. So we're getting down on the ground, but we're not getting back up. We're not coming back to it. We're gonna hold on to that plank. A little bit of plank endurance. So a nice deep breath. With that high heart rate, <laughs> this is one of the most difficult planks you are ever going to hold, but you can do this, I promise. If you need some kind of modification, you can be down on your knees. When it peaks, we're staying in this plank hold. We are doing two intervals, just like we do with all the other exercises. So the next time it peaks, it's the last time it's going to. This is a little bit of a core stability endurance to finish up all that cardio endurance. Make sure your neck is neutral. Body's in a nice straight line. Hips are high, but not too high. Low, but not too low. And knees down. Oh my gosh, you guys. Let's walk it out a little bit. I just want to make sure that we bring our heart rate down nice and safe. So whatever pace you were doing before, I want you to bring it down at least one notch preferably even two or three. We're still moving, but I want you to bring it down. We're gonna do some nice big stretching, some arm circles. Shoulders got a little bit tight. It's funny, you think of running or even walking as such a lower body exercise, but I will tell you from experience, and I'm sure you're feeling it right now, your shoulders get kind of tight too. You're holding your upper body and your core so tight to try and run or walk. But it's actually a full body exercise, including those heart and lungs. I know you felt that. And just cross it open. There we go. Excellent, excellent job. You guys, I am so proud of you. I want you to know 
that with the length of this workout today, I'm gonna go ahead and turn my, my timer off. Woo. With the length of this workout today, if you were walking, even at a moderate pace, you did at least a mile, probably a mile and a half. And if you were keeping up with me at that jogging pace, you did at least two miles and maybe even as many as three. That was some fantastic work today. And I'm super, super proud of you. I really hope that you had a good time with this one today. I had a great time, personally. <laughs> I've already told you that a couple of times. This is my favorite kind of workout. I hope that you liked the video though, and I hope that you'll give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions at all, or just want to say hi, I would love it if you would leave a comment. I really do love to hear from you. And of course, I would also like it if you click that subscribe button. 